So this is your Pro Buggy A main event. Oh, Everybody. Hey, look at that. There's actually open space in the hay bales there. <laughs> Almost like people don't want to sit in the danger zone. Looks like we got a 15-second call, so cars have been filled. There's Joey. Here we go. Good luck to you, drivers. Only fitting that Joey Christensen sends him off for the final race of the night, final race of the week. The Tasman longest, leading it out. The longest, hardest, toughest, biggest off-road race of the year. And Tessman with the lead with three European drivers behind him. Figueroa, Brufalo, Ronafalk. And Mayfield. Right. So there's your top five coming over that center triple section right now. Oh. Oh. That was uh, Figueroa. Figueroa, and he gets collected by Cavalieri. Cavalieri oh, lands boy. rubber side down. Yeah, so did Figueroa somehow. Yeah. But unfortunately, he looks like he's going to be in maybe 10th. So back up front, it's going to be Tessman leading out. Oh, Tessman puts it upside down. Brunflo with a mistake as well, and Ronafalk drives the second spot. Mayfield the third. Mayfield looking to the inside of Ronafalk. Couldn't make it happen. Ronafalk yeah. go hee -haw. Over the double there before the washboard section, but able to punch it and carry it out. You know, I think Baruffalo saw Tessman doing the slow roll. He got oh, on the binders not to get Baruffalo caught up. Baruffalo just destroyed, uh, that would have been Ronafalk. Yeah. So that's going to be, is that Tebow? Tebow Mayfield, Batye now, third, fourth, and fifth. And that's the kind of start Ryan needed from fifth on the grid. Yep. He didn't exactly pass, you know, four people, but he's still right there. Still in the hunt. Out front, Tessman and Ronafalk. And these two have some serious history. The 2014 world champion, 2016 world champion. They were teammates for like a year. Did not get along at all. There was a whole oh. bunch of speculation that that was the reason why, one of the reasons why Tessman left for X-Ray. And uh, yeah, definitely no love lost between these two. So you're thinking Ronald Falk has definitely something to choose and right. set. And at the same time, I think the, the one that's probably the bigger head game here, especially after Ron Falk uh, beat Tessman straight up at the Worlds, mm -hmm. Ty's probably going like, if there was any better way for me to just stick it to this guy. Put it to rest. Right. It would be to just leave him for dead right now. Yeah. So there's the Team Associated Track Cam. You got Tessman leading out with Ronald Falk in the two. Tebow running the Kyosho up into the top three. Then it's Mayfield, Battier, Bornhorst. Cavalieri, Rivkin, Lutz, Ogden, Steez, Figueredo, Fend, Savoya, and Baruffalo. And the only two people that have ever won all three pro classes at this race are Ryan Mayfield and Ty Tessman. It's because they've won everything at this class like 20 times each. Ronald Falk has a pro truck title and a pro e-buggy title. So he can become the first driver. Or oh, Tessman upside down. Ooh, in a bad spot. So Ronald Falk could become the third driver to win all three classes. He'd be the first European winner of the Pro Nitro Buggy class. It, that would be a, a big, big uh, accomplishment for him as well. And it looks like Mayfield and Tebow going at it. Yeah, Tebow jumping over Mayfield, heading into that washboard section, and then just punched it through the bumps to stay ahead. Yeah, Mayfield got a little bit of a rough line coming into the rhythm section. Got it up on the piping, so it had to back off. So Tebow going to go around for the top two, Mayfield in the three, and then it looks like Bornhorse with the Techno up in the top four. There's yeah. Ronafalk. Now, this one absolutely Mayfield to the inside. Absolutely been the biggest win of uh, Bornhorst's career as he moves to the inside of Tessman as well. So Tessman going from second to fourth. That's actually going to be Tebow in fourth, oh, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's Tebow in fourth. So there's Mayfield, well, Bornhorst. And Tessman. That's definitely Ty's part. You are correct. Yeah. I know. 345 <laughs> down, 41.15 to go. And Mayfield running 4.2 seconds behind Ronafog. We can talk about this battle all we want, but if we forget about David just running away like he did in Vegas a couple yeah. years ago, just let everyone else behind, settle it for themselves, and he just takes off. And Bornhorst might be the wrench that helps Ronafog do that because Mayfield and Tessman race together all the time. Neither of them really dice with Bornhorst a whole lot. So... He may not have the same ebb and flow, give and take relationship that these other drivers have with one another. If he's able to get up there and mix it up a little bit, that would slow all three of them down. Yeah. Absolutely. And you've got Mayfield and Tessman coming in from the driver's stand right now. Bornhorst sitting in the top four. Ooh, tie short on the triple. Lucky he didn't bounce it over. And there's a shot of Ronald going underneath the overpass right now. He's got a 4.7 gap. 
with you know he, five minutes in. You know he's driving under there going, suckers. Oh, Mayfield hitting the bump, coming on the straightaway. Testman had to run up the outside, but he had to shut her down early. So through the rhythm section, it's Mayfield under attack from Testman with Bornhorse knocking on his back door. Bornhorse looking to the inside. Through that back triple section they go. Yeah. Now Ty working it defensively. And that, that's going to allow Mayfield to get away because Ty's not in attack mode now. So Mayfield doesn't have to defend. He can focus on just driving ahead of him. Testman's going to have to tighten up his corner entry, and you see that do that there. And that's what allowed Bornhorst to get to the inside. Testman was too early turning into the corner, throwing off his rhythm a little bit. Yep. So down the back straightaway, that is Joe Bornhorst moving into the top three with Testman now dropping into the four spot. Ryan Cavallari from seven on the grid up into the top five. So there's a shot of those cars entering through that rhythm section. Oh. Bornhorst. Yeah, Bornhorst bouncing off the end of the washboard there, turning around backwards. Testman probably both taking a big sigh of relief and also like bummed out that he had to deal with that in the first place. Yeah. And now running 2.2 seconds behind Mayfield. Another second back to Bornhorst. New personal best for Cavalieri last lap, 39.194, but the fastest car on the track by over a second. It was actually, well, actually just over a tenth of a second, Mayfield over Ronafalk. That's a 5.4 second lead. Who's crashed there under the That's bridge? Cavalieri upside down underneath the Oh, oh, oh that was rough. Yeah. So Cavalieri falling down there to Batye. So that is uh, Batye moving up to sixth. So back up front still Ronafalk clicking by. 38-4 fast lap out of Ronafalk back on lap number six. And Mayfield in that two spot. Testman into three. Bornhorst. Ogden now from 13th up to the top five. Wonder yeah. what kind of prediction Ogden made. He didn't. Ah. That was kind of the problem. I was pushing him for it. He's like, no, I'm not going to do that again after truck. Ooh, driving in there on Batia. Yeah, Cavalier was looking for a way by going up the hill, but that's not really a wide enough spot to pass. At least not unless you're closer than that. Absolutely. Rana Falk on Mayfield. Picking up about a half a second last time by, so now it's up to nearly six seconds. Now Mayfield. And oh. Ronafalk coming in front of the timing and scoring with Tessman. So there's top three right yeah. there. Ronafalk must have had a mistake. 44.6. And Mayfield now right on him with Tessman. So the top three, less than a second and a half apart the line last time by. And this will be the first time Ronafalk's really been challenged in this race. Let's see if he can hold off uh, Mayfield as well. As Tessman. Right. And they should be coming up on a fuel stop here pretty soon. There's seven and a half minutes in. 37.30 left to go. So Mayfield going for a different line through the rhythm section. Yeah, Lost really some time out. on that one. Didn't let, didn't gain really anything on that. So Ronafalk going to pull out a little bit more of a gap. Mayfield just sending it over that roller. Oh. Ronafalk in. And Mayfield in. So that me, that tells me right away Tessman's going to try to eliminate a stop. You either have to do 7.30 or 9. And we know that the associated drivers, uh, Tessman, or I'm sorry, Cavalieri and Rifkin will try to go 9. And Mayfield there. Almost catastrophe yeah. on the top of the bridge. I bet the associate guys go nine, and I bet Tessman goes nine. See, Ogden pitted at seven. Ogden never gets good fuel mileage, so that alone might spell doom for his chance at uh, definitely at the podium, if not a top five. Because that would end up having to add a whole stop if he can't go 7.30. Absolutely. Here's Mayfield. 2.3 seconds behind Ronafalk. And Tessman, two and a half seconds behind Tessman. Now he's even with the pit stop. So Tessman's going to have to be rock solid, even though he's going to have one fewer stop. The fact that Ronafalk was able to put enough distance there to only come out with less than a three second gap, you know, that's, that's three seconds for that one extra pit stop. Absolutely. Yeah, not worth it. Nope. So there's. Good shot of Mayfield over that back triple section. Sitting in the top three right now, Rodefalk coming by the start finish line right now in the two. And Tessman, Tessman in. in. Yep, right at nine minutes. And there's Tessman off the end of the straightaway. Off the end of the straightaway, crashed? Or, oh, okay, there he is. No, getting out and actually in front of Mayfield. So, really good stop there. Uh, again, Mayfield must be running an older transponder. Didn't trigger our pit timer, which is a bummer. Uh, Tessman's pit crew six tenths of a second faster than Ronafalk, which is huge. If you're going to stop four times in a race, 
That's almost a second. Right. Or more. Well, yeah, that's that's two and a half two seconds. Two and a half seconds. Yeah. So Rona Falcon for the driver's stand, Tessman for the driver's stand, Mayfield for the driver's stand. That's your top three right there. Then you got Ogden, Battier, Bornhorse, Rivkin now up into the top seven. Savoia, Cavalieri, Fenn, Thibaut, Barafulo, Steez, Figueredo, and Lutz out early on. Looks like Lutz had some technical difficulties. Interestingly, looking at their pit laps, though, uh, Tessman had a 42-2, was a half second faster the whole lap, pit stop included was a half second faster than what Ronald Falk did. And from Ronald Falk to Mayfield was 1.3. So Mayfield's pit lap, including the pit stop, we don't know how long his pit stop was, but the whole lap cost him over a second just to Ronald Falk. Mm -hmm. And there's another half second, so he lost almost two seconds to Tessman on the pit stop. Yeah. So through the drop down they go, you got Ronald Falk leading out, Tessman giving chase. And like it was said, there's a a little bit of history going on right there, so both of those camps want to put each of their cars on the top spot. Rona Falk through that center section, Tessman through the center section, Mayfield through the center section. With 10 and 10, almost 11 minutes in, 34 minutes left to go. Long race. Oh, Rona Falk puts it up on two wheels, going to get off the binders. Here comes Tessman under attack now. <laughs> I hope these guys duke it out for 45 minutes. Rona Falk puts it up on the tubing. Oh, gets Ronald a little Falk, bit of bunk and rub. Yeah, Ronald Falk hit the pipe, but all it did was push him over into Tessman's line. Ty had nowhere to go but to bump him. Hard on the brakes there up on the Astro turf, slowed him down. Maybe, uh, Tessman looking to the inside. Ronald Falk left the door wide open, and then you see he jumped way to the inside of the lane to try to block it from happening in the next 180. And that tells me Ronald Falk is kind of in panic mode to just try to block Ty. Mayfield just sitting back there waiting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mayfield, no stranger to this. He's just sitting back waiting for these two to collect one another or make a mistake and collect that spot. He can stay within striking distance. He knows he's got something for him. But Rona Falk Tessman doing the drop down. Mayfield about 15 feet back. Going through the over-under. That's the 1.2 seconds separate the top three. Whoa, Rona Falk spinning the tires, going up the straightaway. Tessman just blew on by him. But Tess, uh, Ma sorry, Rona Falk to the inside. They get together, Mayfield. Almost dove in on Tessman there. Could have had almost both of them. And Mayfield had to lock up the brakes, not to run Tessman over and give Ronald Falk a big lead. Absolutely. Interesting to note, too, uh, Ronald Falk and Mayfield on J-Concepts tires. Tessman on pro lines. Will that come into play? We've talked to some of the pro line guys, uh, or actually just a lot of the drivers in general. The track a little bit wet in the cold on Sunday night. Gets a little bit greasy, a little bit slick in spots. Tends to favor one tire over another. Oh, Ronald Falk! Off the that track. was weird. Because even when he got back on the dirt, I don't know if he just didn't want to turn and crash the car, or if that was some sort of radio glitch. Got yeah, Savox Insta replay. What on earth? We went way back for this one. Tessman motored by. And Ronald Falk knew he needed to square him up. And then here's where they tangle. Mayfield getting on yeah. the binders. Oh, oh Ronald Falk crashing in that same spot. Tessman gets by. Wow. Deja now, vu. Deja vu. Now it's all up to Tessman to put real estate between himself and Ronald Falk. Yep. And he just pull away now that he's got no one to chase, no one behind him. This is sort of Tessman's forte here. If he can just get out and get a chance to put in, nope, not coming up short on the triple like that, he won't do it. That's what we saw when Ty won the world. That's what we saw when Ty swept the Roar Nationals last year. That's just kind of his game. Get him out front. He had a chance to do that at the beginning of the race. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do it. Ronald Falk staying tight now. Closing up on the back bumper. Ronald Falk definitely going to challenge through that switchback section coming into the rhythm section right now. Ronald Falk under. Breaking, trying to gain up on the back door of Tessman. Mayfield sitting in the top three. Tessman driving so hard, you see him hitting the pipe there at the bottom of the left camera corners. In from the driver's stand, Rona Falk and Tessman. Oh, Rona Falk had to back out and double his way out of the front rhythm section. That gives Tessman a little bit of time to breathe. Ogden up to the four spot, but already pitting here at the 1424 mark. He did go quite a bit longer on his second stint. 
So Tessman off the end of the straightaway. Through that double section he goes. Ronefalk in the two. Looks like somebody going sideways in the back corner. I believe that was Figueredo. Yeah, tough to see uh, Joao and Marco down in 11th and 13th. Oh, we got a flame out of somebody. Uh oh. Well, it's not, uh, yeah. So it wasn't Tessman or Ron Falk. That's really, <laughs> that's really all, all that matters, matters in my book. Yep. There's uh, it's Ron Falk getting around Joao Figueroa. Oh, tumbling on the back straightaway. And so that's going to give Ty probably his biggest lead of the race so far. Absolutely. It was a second and a half at the line. This time by, it's going to be more than that. 15 and a half down, 29.30 left to go. It's Ty Tessman leading out in your pro buggy A main event. David Ronefalk in the two, Mayfield in the three, Cole Ogden from 13th on the grid up to fourth. Bornhorse, Battier, Cavalieri, Savoyer, Fend, Tebow, Steez, Rifkin, Figueredo, Barafulo. And somebody's in for fuel. And Ronefalk, yep, in and out, 7.4. Has a full second slower than Tessman's first stop. So if Tessman can do another 6.5, 7.0 fuel stop, making up a second to a half second a lap, just, or I'm sorry, per pit stop, you know, that adds up a, a ton by the end of the race. And we know that Tessman camp takes those very seriously. Let's see if, no, it's still way too early. If he's going nine minutes, he's got another almost three left to go. Absolutely. Tessman over the right side triple. Rana Falk, seven and a half seconds back, only 1.3 up on Mayfield. And that could be another big boon for Tessman to have Mayfield start to badger Rana Falk. Got Joe Bornhorst and Cole Ogden rounding out the top five. Would be a terrific run for Cole to score a top five. Especially after bumping in in the 13 spot. So Tessman in the tabletop step up. He's got almost probably 8.2 seconds at least back to Ronefalk. There's your leader off the end of the straightaway over that center triple. Through the drop down. Making his way through the underpass. Getting around Ooh, the back marker. Is that Tebow going super slow down the straightaway? Uh, looks like it. Yeah. That's kind of scary. Like not meeting the minimum speed on the freeway. Yeah. And Mayfield, I think. Is that Mayfield tumbling? No. No. So Tessman leading out. Ronefalk in the two. Mayfield. Another seven tenths of a second off the back door of Ronefalk. So that's going to be your closest oh. battle for second and third. Yeah. Ronefalk is seriously out of shape through that first off camber corner. And, and then tumbling again, again in the last corner. Yeah. Ronefalk now in the clutches of Mayfield. Just over six tenths ahead. Robert Batye, 7.3 seconds behind Ryan Mayfield in the fourth spot. Joe Bornhorst, another 1.8 back in fifth. Holagan dropping to sixth. Renault Savoy, a seventh. Ryan Cavalier, eighth. The leader's still going to be Ty Tessman coming by the start finish line right about now. In that two spot is going to be Rona Falk coming over that roller. Tessman in for fuel. Yep, 18 14. That's right on it. Man, I remember announcing races and having to like write down on a piece of paper when the people pitted. Now it's on live time for me. Ronefalk trying to dive inside a couple of slower cars, and he does. Mayfield not able to clear him just yet. That could help Ronefalk. Mayfield trying to dive inside on the straightaway. Off of Tebow. Oh, I got to go. At least Tebow would understand that. I don't know. Uh, next car, Figueroa. I'm sure he's got the memo. Yeah. There's Tessman right there. Rona Falk right there. And Mayfield over that roller. So Tessman in front of the driver's stand. Rona Falk in front of the driver's stand. Mayfield in front of the driver's stand. So that's your three car dance right there. Top three coming into the drop down right now. Tessman doing the drop. Rona Falk doing the drop. And Mayfield doing the drop. With tw 20 minutes in, 25 Very nearly minutes to go. 40% of the way through. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, not even halfway done. Exactly. So Ty Tessman over that back triple section. Coming in front of the tabletop step up by the start finish line. Rona Falk 
Given Chase, he was 2.1 back last time. This time by, going to be 1.3. Tessman a little short on that last oh, jump. Rotafall going to gain up on that back door. Came up, on, came up short on both triples there. And so here's new battle for the top spot. So Rotafall with some newfound fire. Yeah. And then I, I got to go get that guy. This is personal. Well, you can see Tessman in his sights now. So All right, definitely. make a drive even harder. Definitely easier to follow than the lead. Yep. Tessman's going to be thrown out of his rhythm again. Had been all out by himself for a while. And now he's got to play a little bit of defense. Ron Falk can Ooh. sort of do whatever he wants. Coming up on the back door of Fend. Lapping up into the top nine right now. That is Tessman and Ronafalk Mayfield. Another 2.3 back. Lapping into the top 10 is the next car ahead. Looks like Dakota Fend in ninth. Great recovery for Dakota. Bumping into the final here, looking at the top 10, maybe more. Tessman, nearly a big mistake there through the washboard. Ronafalk is floating over that roller, trying to get in every inch. Those jumps look so cool. Yep. Just clearing the top of it and hard on the throttle downhill. Closing under breaking, Ronafalk off top of that drop down. Looking to the inside, almost on the pipe. Coming down that back straightaway, who's got the run? Ronafalk looking to the inside, under breaking. Oh, not quite. Not going to pull it that time. Ronafalk drives into that corner harder, but then he pushes out wider on the exit. And Tessman's able to pull up, uh, pull forward down the hill. So just a little bit of a different approach. And Tessman bumping off the tube right there. Rotafalk on the binders. That's where that difference is between leading and following because Tessman never would have entered the corner that tight to begin with. And because he's already doing that, he has to go slower. And Rotafalk just goes in even tighter, breaks harder. He knows because Tessman's going to be already slower in and out of the corner, he can do that and then try to regroup if it doesn't work. Yep, possibly force an issue. Right. So Tessman through the bowl turn, Ronafalk through the bowl turn, coming through the rumble assumptions they go. It's not like in you know full-size car racing, NASCAR F1, where when you're following right up on a car, you lose downforce and the car handles worse. Yep. It doesn't change like that. So Ronafalk can drive it in there and know it'll stick just like it does without anybody ahead. Tessman coming a little short on that second triple. Drop back probably a foot and a half to two feet. Ronafalk still gaining chase. Through the under, over. There's Mayfield right there in the top three. Yep. Then it's going to be Battier, Bornhorse, Cavalieri up into the top six, Savoya, Ogden down to the top eight, Dakota Fenn, Jared Tebow, Tanner Steez, Figueredo, Rivkin, Barafulo, and Lutz back up and running. And Tessman here with some breathing room after Ron Falk making a mistake during our rundown of the field. And Tessman getting to take a deep breath for the first time in several laps, stretching out a two-second lead. And two seconds doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when two seconds can be a rollover or a mistake or bouncing up into the you know, bridge area here, as long as you land back on your wheels, that's all they need. Especially these guys are used to racing electric where the track is a third the size and two seconds is you know, nearly 20% of the lap. Absolutely. Yeah, two seconds is big. Tessman leading out still. Rotafalk in the two. 24 minutes in, 21 minutes left to go. 21 minutes left to go. So here comes Tessman in front of the driver's stand right now. Rotafalk coming in for fuel. Let's see how this goes. Up on the blocks. Back down. 7.1. Better. Better. Still not a 6.8 like yeah. Tessman's was. All right. So again, even if it's just two tenths, three tenths, half a second a pit stop. And, you know, we talk all the time about uh, Tessman's work on that kind of thing at home. They practice. Yep. And oh, and Ron Paul crashed into the bull turn. That's a much bigger disadvantage than his pit stop. So we are uh, about three minutes away from Tessman's next pit stop. And so let's see what... What lap times Tessman's able to do. Uh, Ronald Falk's pit lap, including that crash, at 45.2. There he goes, Tessman down the back straightaway. Through the double section. Into the bull turn. 
Calm and smooth up on the piping. Going for the option line on that one through the back triple. Tessman working his way around some back markers. Charging up over that first step up jump. Just trying to do the same thing every lap. Last, actually, that was quite a bit faster than his lap before. Six tenths of a second faster. Over the right side triple there. Tessman, Ron Funk, Mayfield, Batye, Bornhorst. The lead for Tessman, 9.2. Over Ron Falk, and of course that takes into consideration Ron Falk's extra pit stop to this point. We won't see the advantage of Tessman's one fewer fuel stop until Ron Falk pits at the 37-30 mark. Roughly they're about tip. Yeah, give or take 60 seconds. Tessman leading out still. Over that back jump he goes. Clicking off yet another lap. Fast lap out of Tessman, 38-5, 38-4 out of Ron Falk. Tessman off the end of the straightaway. Ooh. Oh. See, that could have been disastrous. Yeah, two seconds, though, would have been big enough for that. Yeah. Now 9.2 seconds. He can do that four times. A little bouncy there coming down the hill as well. I think that's the first time I've seen uh, Tessman get out of shape because he's usually uh, tighter coming down the hill there. And we've seen Ronapak crash coming down that hill a couple times. I think those are the bumps that he's been hitting. Robert Batye up to fourth. So he's still got two Europeans in the top four. The two that have been here uh, more than once. About 18 minutes left on the race clock. It's Tessman leading out. Mayfield now moving up into the top two. Ronafalk dropping it to the three spot. Batye in the four. Bornhorse, Cavallari. Here's yeah, Joe Bornhorst in that block-powered techno buggy with Proline tires. Up over the right side triple. I think uh, this might be, yeah, this would be his best uh, finish in the buggy class because we were talking about this on, I think, Friday night. And at least before this main started, my best finish in pro buggy at this race was better than his. So... Unfortunately, it looks like he's going to beat that unless he breaks. He's got 14 seconds on Renault Savoia, and then another 2.4 back to Cavalry from there. Cavalry and Ogden actually a little battle for the seventh spot, it looks like. Down the back straight, it looks to be that is Mayfield. Oh, Tessman has been in for his third pit stop. We missed it. He actually pit a little bit early from his window, yeah. 26.52, because otherwise he would have been at 27.30. And I, mean, I don't know. I think had I been Gord, I probably would have had him stay out the one more lap. Because now if it comes down to it at the end of it, he could be going you know, 10 or, or 10.30 instead of you know, 9, 9.45. So battle right there coming down the back straight. That is Ryan Mayfield and David Rodefalk. Off the other of coming up on the back door of Tebow, it looks like. Through that double section they go. Mayfield hooking up a pipe. No harm, no foul. Gets it short. Ronafalk with a run. That's what Ty needs. But these guys beat on each other. Ty Tesman, your leader on the track. Getting Mayfield in two. And around Renault Savoya. Savoya thought he might have something to win this race. Eight. Not exactly at the top of the box. Still a pretty good run from 12th on the grid. Absolutely. So now Savoye in between Mayfield and Ronafalk. So there's Tessman coming down the back straightaway. Mayfield coming down the back straightaway. Ronafalk coming down the back straightaway. Yeah, coming up on Ogden, so that would be putting the top seven a lap down. And Mayfield hard on the brakes. Looking to the inside, there is Tessman trying to find a way around Ogden. And here comes Mayfield over that tabletop step up. Mayfield looking to the inside. Ogden goes out the outside to get some fuel. Yep. And in the process, Ooh. wow, both of them coming up short on the triple. You know, if the, the lap times and pace that they're on right now play out, only the top five would finish on the lead lap. Oh, oh Tessman Mayfield. kicking hard coming down the straightaway. Yeehaw! That's right. And a donkey kick. Yeah, Mayfield able to take over the lead. Ronald Fogg waiting back there. Probably wishing that Tessman had just tumbled so he could get right on by without having to work for it. Exactly. Now Mayfield going to lead out with 30 minutes in, 15 to go. It is Mayfield, Tessman, Rodefalk. 
Top three cars coming in front of the driver's stand right now. Yeah, Sevox instant replay on what happened here on the back straightaway. You watch Tessman's car hit the inside. Wow, that was violent. That looked way worse in slow-mo than it did at real speed. Here they are again through that section on the same lap. Tessman, oh. same corner, same rut. That's not like Tessman at all. He did the same, same exact, exact thing. thing. Next lap around. That was not worth it. So Mayfield and Rodefalk now. Gord gonna is going to come unglued in pit, in pit lane for that. And by that, I mean, like, his face won't even change. But Mayfield oh. with a mistake. Ron Falk by a lead. Exactly. So you got 30 minutes in, 15, less than 15 minutes left on the master clock. 14 and a half minutes to be exact. It's David Ron Falk, your new leader. It was Ty Tessman. He got a rough patch of luck coming on the back straightaway. Mayfield in the two. Tessman still sitting in the top three. He is about seven and a half seconds back. There's a good shot of Tessman's car right there. Rona Falk coming through that switchback section over the floater tabletop. And, and he's Ron coming in, in for lane. fuel. Mayfield, in, Mayfield in for fuel. So these two are going to resume that race and stay on top of one another. Rona Falk out. Mayfield out. Ooh. Where's Tessman? Uh-oh, Rona oh. Falk upside down. Yeah. Engine's still lit. That's yeah, a good thing. And there's and Tessman right yeah. behind him. The Tessman, unfortunately, was not close enough to benefit there. That's because Tessman's crash lap of 46-2. So give that six seconds back, and Tessman's leading the race going away. Yeah. There's Mayfield. Rona fault. Yeah. And Tessman. I guess Should I wasn't, into wasn't paying attention that that's when those two were pitting because uh, that made Tessman's wreck come at pretty much the worst possible time. That is a little bit of a wise pit strategy of your top two front runners. Maybe he'll put it up on two wheels, hitting that same rut that Tessman did. Not getting unsettled. Mayfield Roadfalk through the center section of the track. Tessman right there as well, another 1.5 back. We've been talking about the fuel uh, uh, fuel mileage strategies and how Tessman's going to uh, pit one fewer time. Tessman's pitting every nine minutes, so he's got to pit at 9, 18, 27, 36, and he's done in four stops. Otherwise, to do it in five stops, you got to go 7.30. Then you're at 7.30, 15, 22, 30, 30, 37, 30, and then you're done. Yep. So... You can be anywhere in the middle there. You know, you might pit at 8 and 16, and then, you know, your last stop, you're, you know, pitting at the 40-minute mark or the 42-minute mark. But those are the cutoffs to be able to make it and cut out that one fewer stop, and that's what Tessman's doing. That Again, we won't see that advantage until his last pit stop is at 36, and then at that point they'll have both stopped four times, and then Ron Falk and Mayfield will have to pit for a fifth time at 37.30, just 90 seconds later, and that's when we'll see the benefit of Ty's fuel mileage strategy. And Tessman making his way around Rodefalk for the top two. Rodefalk getting it sideways, coming down the back straightaway. So it is Mayfield leading out. You see Mayfield right there entering into that double-double section. Tessman and Rodefalk. So there's Mayfield, first car in line over that back triple. Tessman giving chase. Rodefalk in the three. Mayfield, the best he's looked all race. A 39.689 last time by was actually the slowest of the top three. Looking for his second consecutive Nitro Buggy Championship, having already won his third straight uh, electric title earlier. And looking back through the history all the way back to the year 2000, the first ever year of this race, no one has ever won the Nitro Buggy class two years in a row. So if Mayfield can do that, he'd be making a Dirt Nitro Challenge history as well. And I know that's the one thing that Mayfield's really been trying to work on is the, the program that he has to make it as consistent and easy to drive as possible. So he's definitely been putting in some laps and trying to figure things out. And, you know, it's definitely showing right now. He's got 35 minutes in, 10 minutes left. Mayfield leading out, Tessman in the two, Rona Falk in the three. So there's Mayfield underneath the underpass. 
Tessman underneath the underpass, and Rotofalk underneath the underpass. Tessman getting that bump again, but keeping the car on all four wheels. It looks like Dakota Fenn, yeah, dropped down to this one a little bit ago. And now Tessman under attack from Rotofalk. Through the rumble section they go. Yeah. Rotofalk looking high, looking low, looking for some place to go. Looking like his car just has way more grip. Yeah, it looks like it's got a lot better forward drive. Right. Yeah, sometimes lacking a little bit of side bite is nice because it helps the car slide over the bumps, and once you learn how to drive it that way, you can still be precise with it, but being able to punch it and not just light the tires up. That says something else. Yeah. Oh, not only does it increase your drive out of the corner, but it's better on fuel mileage. Yep. So there's Mayfield, Tessman, and Ronafalk through our team-associated track cam. Oh, Tessman oh. gets it sideways. Ronafalk to the inside. And where will and Tessman try to get, get him back? He knows he's got to do it sooner than later. Yep. Not there's here in Mayfield. this 180. Nope, not no. quite enough. Is this a matter of tires? Oh, Tessman with a shot at the top of the hill. No, Ronafalk was going to the inside of the corner there. Tessman or not. Tessman to the inside there. Wow. And back to the inside. Oh, nice to that Jeez. rumble section. Yeah, Rotofalk. I thought for sure Ronafalk was going to hit those bumps that had killed Tessman a little bit ago. Car just floated right through it. Oh, he got, yeah, got to the inside of it. And just a totally different approach. That was a wild sequence, though. We saw Cavallari go to lap down. Yeah. Tessman sent it in in a couple spots there. I didn't think he would. Ronafalk fighting right back, and here comes Tessman in for his final stop. So let's see if he's got another one of those Tessman pit stops. That one actually 7.2, so that was a half second slower than Ronald Fox's previous stop. Which, like if they needed a good one, that was it. Yep. And hope the rest of the lap is clean there. And he's basically got to run clean from here on out to make this one fewer stop an advantage because at the moment, they've both done the same amount of fuel stops. Ronald Fox a half second behind Mayfield. Tessman is another 2.3 seconds back, and Robert Batye, oh my goodness, Batye is up in the mix, but he's gonna have to pin an extra time. Tessman with a little mistake there at the end of the straightaway. That's gonna kill that advantage. I didn't see, do we have something happen with Mayfield where Ronald got around him? Because uh, it looks like it. Wow, yep. So Ronafalk now into that lead spot, Mayfield in the two, but they still have to go in for their final pit. So it's going to be interesting. Are they going to do it now? Yep. There goes Ronafalk. Mayfield, Mayfield staying, staying out. out. Oh, yeah. Mayfield's, that makes me think uh, Mayfield's next lap, or next pit has to be on this next lap. He's already within 7.15. Probably just didn't want to be in pit lane at the same time and risk a collision there. Absolutely. Now is that Robert Battier behind Mayfield yeah. as well? So Battier from Portugal. Uh, sit Spain. In the Spain. Yeah, Barcelona. Barcelona. Amazing city. So, top three favorite places. <laughs> yep. So Mayfield and Battier. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 oh no. both of them. Who lands on the wheels? Battier. Oh, Battier, Mayfield going for the option line. Battier in the pit lane. Mayfield, Mayfield into pit lane. lane. Oh, Mayfield with a horrible stop. Oh. Yeah, it's a good thing we don't see Mayfield's pit timer there because that was not good. Not good. So with six and a half minutes to go. Ooh. Yeah, and Batye's pit stop, fire. Yeah. 6.479. Yeah, Savox instant replay here. Up over the step up. Mayfield clipping the top. Batye clips the top. Batye, both of them tumble. The Mugen Safety Racing teammates, both of them probably just holding their breaths. Here comes Ronafalk, drives his way in there. So Ronafalk up top again. Tessman in the two. Batye in the three. Mayfield in the four. And by Batye in the three, we mean right there. Oh, somebody stuffed it at the end of the straightaway. Oh, I didn't see who that was. Five minutes and 30 seconds left, left to go. 
your 45 minute pro buggy A main event. There is Ronafal. There's Battier. Tessman. So Battier sitting in the top two. Tessman in the three, and there is a shot of Mayfield, I believe, coming into the file right now. What a change this would be. The year that a European driver wins the Nitro Challenge for the first time, they go one, two. One, two. So there is Ronefalk off the end of the straightaway again. Look at that tube getting moved up after a car went underneath it. There's Battier. He is 2.7 back off of Ronefalk. Somebody oh. stuck on the tube. Yep. So there is David Ronefalk. Year leader. Yeah, that's Joao Figueredo running in the 12th spot. His first time in the Nitro Challenge, super fast in qualifying. It's been 48 hours since the last time they, you know, had run a qualifier here. I'm sure, you know, a, a total different track, a whole bunch of changing conditions here. They haven't been to this race before. Absolutely. You know, I really look forward to seeing what uh, Figueredo and Barufalo Maybe even a driver like Max Mort, you know, come over here and see what they can do in the pro class in a few years. I mean, Pat has been to this race like a half dozen times. And this is the first time that I think he's finished in the top five. So yeah. tough run. I, I was, I think I had a uh, little higher hopes for Figueroa and, and Brufalo than were really reasonable. Here's Robert Batye. I love the hot race carbon wheels with the taller They've got the sidewall. black stripe around the end, so yep. it makes the, the tire look like it's got a taller sidewall. It looks cool. There's Battier with Tessman in tow. Yeah. 3.30 left on the master clock. Ron Fault leading out. Battier in the two. There's Robert Battier. Interesting to see the difference between like how Mayfield's MBX8 and Battier's MBX8 work. I know like totally different tires, but obviously totally different setups as well. Batye's car just looks stuck to the ground like Velcro. And Mayfield's car is sliding all around. He's just punched, tires lit up everywhere. Yeah, and Batye's got a huge amount of drive off the corner. Look at him just pull yeah, Tessman right there. Just yanks away from down the corner. This is the 2012 world champion and the 2014 world champion with the 2016 world champion out front. Yep. There's reason he's a former world champion. Ooh. 250 left on the master clock in your 45 minute pro buggy. A main event right now, you're watching David Ronefalk leading out. Robert Battier in the two, Ty Tessman in the three. Ryan Mayfield sitting back in the top four. Now Tessman getting it wrong off that triple section. That's gonna drop him back off of Battier with 2.30 left to go on the clock. Mayfield coming sideways off the top of the hill. With 2.15 left on the master clock, David Ronefalk just trying to keep it rubber side down. He knows he's got it in the bag. Robert Battier sitting in the top two. He's got about four and a half seconds on Tessman. And he does, he got about four seconds on Tessman. Tessman over the triple section with ease. Mayfield another 6.6 .6 back. There's a shot of your leader of David Ronefalk through the back section coming down the back straightaway. Off the end of the straightaway, under braking, keeping it rubber side down, trying not to get the car upset. He's got 2.1 seconds on Robert Battier, so he knows time winding down. 135 left to go on lot number 66 of a projected 69. And it looks like it's going to be just the top three that get by for that extra lap. Robert uh, Ryan Mayfield will finish about four seconds after the tone. There's a, oh, Ron Falk going yeah. wide. Yeah, and looking a little scary too. Kind of a dead sailor, like he needed yep. to rip on it. There's a look at Ron Falk, just stone faced, watching his car go around the track. Yep. Maybe a little bit of uh, you know nervous mouth movement. You see a lot of drivers when they're super focused. I know my mouth used to just hang open. Fish hook. Yeah, flies in and out. It's awful. So we are less than a minute left in your pro buggy. A main event winding it down here. 2018 Dirt Nitro Challenge. It's all over, but the champagne getting uncorked. Is it going to be Ronefalk? Is it going to be Battier? Gap is going to be 2.4 seconds. Final time off the drop down. That is David Ronefalk. 
through the over-under, makes it nice and collected. Robert Battier in the three, Tessman in the four, Mayfield in, excuse me, Tessman in the three, Mayfield in the four. So there is David Ronefalk. Final time around the track, less than 20 seconds. He will possibly get by for one more. 15 seconds left to go. And here we go with less than 10. Ronefalk going to get by for one more lap. Makes the turn and over the triple. Battier going to make it by as well. So they will be racing to the line. It is Battier, Ronefalk, and Tessman. Your three cars still on the lead lap. Time has expired. So all eyes on Ronefalk. Needing to keep it rubber side down. Coming down that back straightaway. He's got Battier 1.8 seconds back. Hard charging. Off the end of the straightaway. A little out of focus on the double-double section. Going into that back double rhythm section. Final trip over the triple section. Making that right hand. And are getting a little sideways into the tube. Over the roller. Tabletop step up. Here comes Battier giving it everything he's got. Rodefalk hooks up a pipe. Is it going to be Rodefalk? Oh, my goodness. Rodefalk hooking up a pipe. Battier almost sneaking to the inside to be the Cinderella story. Tesman in third. Mayfield, Bornhorst, Savoya, Cavallari, Ogden, Steez, Tebow, Rifkin, Figueredo, Barafulo, and Lutz. Falk, first European driver ever to win the Nitro Challenger Pro Nitro Buggy. How does it feel? It feels awesome. I mean, I got the same feelings back when I when I was in Vegas, when I won the Worlds. They were a lot closer this time, though. So it was a tense there on the last few laps. On this gnarly track, it's super rough out there. Hard to stay clean. The jump section in the front, super tough. I saw him closing down, but I just trying to stay cool, trying to stay cool. Made it over the last step up, caught the pipe a little bit, but I just made it over the line and I, oh, oh it so, feels so good, it feels so good. Is it more satisfying when it's close? For sure, for sure. I mean, this is for sure the closest, I mean, I, I had a Euros in 2013 with Savoy as well, but this is probably the closest race that I've won in the in a long, long race like this, so it feels so good good at this race before but I feel like you had a little something extra this year what was it yeah definitely in the buggy was always good since the start of qualifying uh, I was struggling a little bit in truggy and, and e-buggy so it feels so great now uh, being able to cap off the win here uh, and and then yeah I'm gonna stay here another week for Desert Classic but yeah first big race uh, was Montpellier I was a bit disappointing for us but came back strong here and uh, yeah it feels so great feels so great did you know that you were not only the first European to win, but also only the second driver ever to win all three different classes at this race? Uh, that's pretty awesome. I didn't know the, the second one. I knew the first one in, in Pro Nitro Buggy, so yeah, that feels great. Uh, but yeah it, yeah, it was a great battle out there. It was clean. Robert, he creeped up on the end, and uh, Ty, me, and Mayfield had a go at it. And uh, yeah, it was just amazing, amazing race. Anybody you want to say thank you to? I want to thank the whole HP Racing team, uh, Team Orion, Adrian, Jay Concept, Jason is here, uh, track support, yeah, just everybody supporting me, uh, my whole family back home, I know they are watching, and uh, yeah, I'm just so happy, thank you all. Congratulations, David. Thank you. And Robert Batye, his best finish ever at this race, second, um, great job. Yeah, thank you, it has been so hard, I started at the back and I had a lot of traffic and I lost so many seconds from them, so I had to bump up a little bit and try to catch them, but they were super fast. So it got me so quite much than expected. And finally, I was so close. I think it has been less than one second difference. But I mean, I'm happy because I'm top three at least here in the USA. But we were so close qualifying, going from eighth. It has been quite critical for me, but I'm quite good. Same with David. We've seen you at this race many, many times, but this time you were far closer to the win here than ever before. What was the big difference? It just was getting much used to this kind of tracks where in Europe we don't have, so it's quite difficult to get to get used to there. But also in my case, for example, the new package with the Mugen, with the new Mugen, the Ninja and Hot Race were awesome. It fits super nice for me, so I'm pretty confident and just been super close to the win, but I'm really and happy. Anybody you want to say thank you to? Uh, just thank you to everyone, just to believe in us and to believe in our brand and sponsors, everyone who 
who just continue believing us each race by race and my family that they are they are sleeping I think now. So that's all. Thank uh, you to you also for the coverage and the dirt, the track, everything. Yeah, your family can watch the replay. Congratulations, Robert. Thank you. Bye-bye. And then finishing up in the third spot here, Ty Tessman, pretty darn close this time, uh, but able to escape those gremlins from last year, get on the podium. Yeah, it's, it's kind of disappointing starting first and not winning, but uh, we had a lot of bad luck in the couple year, couple past years. So to have a run without any issues, um, car finished good. Uh, the car was really good the whole time. It's just this track is hard to race on, and it's even harder to battle on. So. Um, just kind of happy that everything went smoothly. Uh, still a top three, but it's definitely a little bit of a disappointment not to win. You talked about how you've had gremlins here the last couple of years, mechanical issues and just fluke weird things happening. Was that ever in your mind during this race? Um, I just tried not to I really think about it as fast as I could and trying to keep up with the guys. Um, yeah, it's just, it's good to finish and have everything kind of work. We figured out everything, I guess, uh, as far as the mechanical issues and electronic issues, but it was good to kind of come back and just get a good run in. Anybody you want to say thank you to? Yeah, I just want to thank all my sponsors uh, for all their support and help over the years. Uh, all my, my family for their love and support through all the thick and thin. Um, and then most importantly, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Ty, and congratulations. Thanks. An amazing finish to an amazing pro buggy final here. Uh, a lot of history being made tonight. And God darn it, it's cold. I'm going to send it back to the booth. Yeah, we're sitting there watching you shivering, Aaron. So that was uh, kind of good. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, why don't you have a jacket on? It's like 30 degrees outside. But, hey, you know, you're from Portland. I mean, I'm sure you're used to that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, tremendous wrap-up to the 2018 Dirt Nitro Challenge. We're going to let Aaron uh, come back into the warm announcer's booth, and we'll do our wrap-up report. So big thanks to everybody for uh, tuning in watching all around the world. Uh, so, again, stay tuned. We'll be back with you here in just a few seconds with our wrap-up of the event. This is the ProTech RC LS5. It's a five-port long-stroke .21 nitro engine, perfect for buggies and great for truck. It features everything you'd expect, like an easy-to-tune, heat-resistant carburetor, turbo plug, large cooling head, and explosive power, all at a price point that blows away the competition. When you need unbelievable torque and gallon-after-gallon -gallon reliability, head on over to A-Main Hobbies and pick up the ProTec LS5. Hi, I'm Shane Kelly with Leadfinger RC. We're here at the 2018 Dirt Nitro Challenge, debuting the new LFR A2 tactic body for the Techno NB48.4. Body's been working awesome on this high grip, high speed layout, providing the perfect downforce to get around the track as fast as possible. You can check it out today at leadfingerrc.com. Why do racers from around the world shop at AMA.com Performance Sports and Hobbies? Because winners and world champions shop with the best. We have the hottest new racing kits on the market and the parts and accessories you need to make it to the A-Main. Your competitors already shop with us, shouldn't you? Find out why we're the world's number one source for the gear you need to make it to the podium. Join the race? Log on to AMA.com today. AMA.com. When it comes to true champions by design, Team Associated Ready Controlled Cars have everyone beat hands down. With multiple national and world titles won over the decades, it's no wonder Team Associated RC vehicles are the highest performing cars and trucks on the track today. So get behind the wheel of your very own Team Associated Ready Controlled Car or Truck and be part of the winning team. Will you be the next world champion? Welcome back to the Savox Broadcast booth for the final time here at the Fear Farm RC Raceway in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm Aaron Waldron here with Richard Lake, and I'm not sure, is the earth shaking or is it just me? I'm, I'm pretty sure it was you. Um, <laughs> you know, you'd think somebody who lives in the cold weather would go outside with a, with a jacket, but hey, you know, 
Y- like, y- you got to feel it, I guess. Oh, it's only going to be like five minutes. I ought to be all right. Oh, no. No. Yeah, I guess when everyone else is in a sweatshirt and jacket, uh, short sleeve shirt's not the best idea. Probably not the best thing to do. <laughs> so That was not great, Bob. Yeah, no. Should have got a little insight on that one. But, hey, you learned from the second time. So. Yeah, right. I've never done this before, I promise. Yeah, we're, new, we're new at this. <laughs> well. Any comments will be taken to heart, please. Sure, yeah. Send in some insight. Yeah, if you've got some uh, expert advice, you know, for all those who have more experience out there, please let me know. Exactly. Uh, David Ronafog. Whoa. Holy cow. Yeah. Laid it down. And and held it together at the end when he wasn't just out front. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it the only time it came into play was when time was expired and he clipped the tube. Right. Trying to play it safe and Battier was right there. Yeah. But, but he he withstood attacks from Tessman from Mayfield, and then from yep. Batye at the end, held it together, did what he needed to do. Absolutely. And he talked about it, you know, comparing it to the Worlds back in 2016, mm-hmm. when he was just able to get out front and kind of do his own thing. Yep. And this time, like, he never really got left alone. Exactly. And the podium from tonight's race, same exact as it was at the Worlds. Right, yeah. Ron Falk, so. Batye, Tessman. Yep. Uh, Robert Batye, I can't tell you how many times I've seen him at this race. And mm-hmm. the Europeans, every time they tell us they come up here over here, we like running on these tracks. We know we need to get better at them. Yep. It's nothing like they ever see at home. The surface is different. The layout's different. The jumps, the jumps are, different. are different. And the American yeah. drivers drive them differently. Oh, yeah. And so for Batye to come in here, you know, hot race tires, pretty darn unproven. Yeah. MBX8, you know, they ran it at Montpellier, but, uh, you know, it was obviously a new car for them. Mm-hmm. And so he comes out here. We had no idea what to expect. Second place is not what we expected. Not what we expected at all. And his car by large, look to be the best out there. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, from just carrying corner speed to going through the rough and tough, um, his car was was one of the best. The tires were phenomenal. Yep. Um, they did what they needed to do. So, you know, everybody out there, take note. They're uh, they're definitely a new new contender on the market. And from eighth on the grid, I think, makes that even more impressive. I think Robert Batye sort of gets forgotten in this new generation of racers. I remember meeting Robert at the Worlds back in 2004. Like, that guy's been around a long time. Yeah. And it has been six years since he was the world champion. Mm -hmm. So especially over here stateside, I think, you know, we think about the European drivers, obviously. We think of, you know, Rana Falk and Bruno. Mm -hmm. But Robert Batia came to play this week. Came to play this week. Exactly. And, and, you know, the nice thing that it was nice to see with with the European drivers is the attack that they had on the track. Usually, you know, they're used to the nice flowing carry the corner speed tracks, not the point and shoot, right. attack the jumps. And this year they, they came, you know, with a different mindset, I think, to really attack what they needed to see. And it almost seemed like they all played together because they had way mm-hmm. more drivers in the main as usual. Yep. Uh, you know, Ron Falk and Batye. Like, I, I don't, obviously don't think that, like, uh, Joao and uh, Berton, I'm sorry, Barufalo uh-huh. and Robert and David are all like, oh, you know, how do we figure this out? But Something changed. Yeah. This yeah, they, year was they were different. all clicking. They were all clicking. And, and, you know, the nice thing was, like you said, you saw so many Europeans up in the mix this weekend that it was anybody's ballgame. Yeah. You know, it, it truly was. And so. so to have those two out front and then see Ty Tessman, when Tessman and Mayfield have won this race more than any other people since 2007, mm-hmm. and Tessman and Mayfield were third and fourth, usually we see that first and second. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But you know, kudos to Ty. He kept his head down. You know, he had a little bit of rough luck. Um, you know, salvaged a third out of it. And, you know, he's he's got to be happy with the performance, even though, you know, he didn't say he was happy with the performance. Anytime you get a top three at yeah. this event, you know, everybody wants to win. Don't get me wrong. You definitely want to. But if you could do a top three at the Dirt Nitro Challenge, it's called the challenge for a reason. Especially, I think, given what he had last year and even last night in the truck main. Exactly. Like, yeah, Tessman says when they go to a race, they go to win. Yep. But I have a feeling he's going to be happier with this third place than usual. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, as we talked about, Ryan Mayfield in the fourth spot, a terrific finish for him. Joe Bornhorst grabbing a top five. Where'd that come from? Yeah, best finish for Joe at this race. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, he, you know, and again, you know, watching the techno cars all weekend, you know, they've been looking good. And again, that's another team that's that's new to the market. Yeah. They're gelling, you know. They're finding out the different setups, the different uh, quirks with the car. You know, they're always going to be testing and tuning it. They don't have, you know, as much track time as everybody else does. So for them to come out, put Bornhorst in the top five, again, kudos to that team. They're they're working. They're they're doing the team thing. They're they're doing what they need to do. By the way, gelling races for X-ray. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Renault Savoia finishing sixth. He was twelfth on the grid. 
he did say before the race uh, that he was going to win it. And maybe that was kind of a callback to Cole last night. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Reno just absolutely thought his car was, you know, phenomenal. But, I mean, to go from 12th on the grid to 6th in this kind of field, yep. that he picked up, you know, more spots. I mean, he picked up the same amount of spots as Batia did. Yeah, exactly. Terrific run there for Savoia. Uh, Cavalieri, a multi-time former champion, finishing 7th from 7th yep. on the grid. Obviously not his best. Yeah. Uh, doing all right, though. Uh, Cole Ogden picking up another five spots. Did well in truck. Did well here in buggy. Uh, Tanner Stees picked up a couple of positions. Yeah. Uh, Tanner Stees, that's that's kind of one of those things where you know he qualified 11th, he finished ninth. I don't think anyone leaves this race going like, man, Stees yeah. killed it. But like that's not again easy. When, when you're exactly when you're moving up in the pro buggy A finale, if you can advance even one spot on this track, you've done yourself a service. Yeah. To move up two, even more of a service. If you can win, hey, hats off to you. Yeah. But you know any spot that you get above where you qualify, it's a win in the book. Jared Tebow, his first Nitro race without former team manager and mechanic Joe Pillars. I have no idea how much that contributed to it. Uh, of course, in the main events, just mm-hmm. not really able to do much once he got there. Yeah, yeah, he was, uh, you know, he was there. He had he had a couple glimpses where he was looking in, um, but I think the consistency just wasn't wasn't right there like he wanted. No, uh, Spencer Rivkin finishing 11th, same thing. You know, he qualified 10th, he finished 11th. He wasn't super happy with how he qualified in either class. He did get up on the podium in the truck category, but you know he's going to be super bummed about how he finished here. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, he always likes to think that, uh, you know, Buggy is, is definitely the foray. That's what he's used to driving. Um, so I know he's not happy with, with how he did, but at the same token, he's going to take it as learning experience because that's the work ethic that Spencer has. Um, he's going to learn from how the car was, how the track was, um, and apply it to his next time out. And then uh, in the 12th and 13th spots, we had second and third qualifier, Joao Figueredo, Marco Barufalo. It sucks that we got to talk about this. Like, hmm. it, it really, I think, smears mud on this whole race that people are going to look at the fact that these two kids who never raced at the Dirt Nitro Challenge before qualified insanely well, had decent lap times, mm-hmm. but the fact that they didn't, like finish in the top five means that like they must have had gyros in the car. Like that's insane. That is because that's putting the burden of proof on them. Yeah. Like they had to prove that they weren't cheating for anyone to think like, Oh, maybe they just qualified well. And maybe the fact that they didn't win the main was because they hadn't run their cars on the track in 45 minutes. And the track was way different because the dirt was way different. Way different. Exactly. Like, Totally tr- different nuts. track surface. Yeah. It's, and, like, it, it honestly makes me pretty mad that, like, that's what we're going to take away from this. Yeah. Is, like, someone who apologized for being, you know, not his most mature at all. Mm-hmm. And, frankly, like, delivered a pretty darn contrite response to it before anybody had to say anything. And these two young men who have done really darn well considering how, you know, Little they've been racing. Like, I think they were Euros B drivers within just the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And, like, you have world champions like Rana Falk and Batye who've struggled at this race for a decade now. Consistently. But, like, because these two, you've never heard of these two drivers, like, they must they have been must cheating. They must have been cheating. Yeah. Just, that sucks. Exactly. Uh, Ryan Lutz getting another techno car in the main, quali- you know, bumped in with the last spot, uh, finishing in the 14th position, you know, ran the whole. 45 minutes, he was six laps off at the end. So, like, we know he had problems. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Lutz is going to get one of these things someday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's always the bridesmaid. Yeah. And Dakota Fend, we know Dakota struggled the whole yeah. weekend. Uh, you know, starting 14th there, finishing 15th. have no idea. Um, you know, obviously this Pico thing seemed like it kind of came together last minute. Yeah. And this isn't – Dakota's done really well a lot of nitro races. This mm-hmm. really isn't one of them. Yeah. Um, you know, a predominantly electric racer obviously has done very well as a former eight scale truck national champion in the yep. nitro class. So we know he can drive an eight scale car, but he's got to figure this nitro challenge thing out sometime. Exactly. Yeah. And you've got to have the, you know, you have to have the equipment and the knowledge going into it to be consistent with it and, you know, just safe with it. And if, if it's, you know, like you said, it, it's a new gig to him. So, you know, hopefully he gets it sorted out and I think it'll be better for him, but 
yeah, it was definitely one of those things where, you know, he did what he needed to do. He got it in the A main, so kudos to Dakota. You know, and again, it's it he's gonna take it as learning experience, hopefully. You know, see what the car did, see how the motor was, and make some changes from there. And you gotta think, uh, drivers, you know, like David Ronafalk, Robert Batye, especially Ryan Mayfield and Ty Tessman, mm -hmm. they've been coming to this race a lot longer than Dakota has. Exactly. Yeah, they're the seasoned veterans. Yeah. So. And so that's how it finished up here. An amazing, busy, long, super exciting five days of racing here at the Fear Farm RC Raceway for the 19th annual Dirt Nitro Challenge. One of the coolest legacies that's been built in this RC racing industry. I love it. Bar none. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's one of the bucket lists people want to put on their, uh, on their race list. And, you know, if you can do it and you can, uh, you can hang for the week. <laughs> yeah, if you can have some fun with that. Yeah, if you can get through it. It's uh, definitely something that every diehard RC junkie needs to experience at least one time. Exactly. I would agree with you 100%. 100%. So, special thank you to our camera crew this weekend. Of course, Bob Kendall takes all of our photos, runs a lot of camera. He shoots all my interviews. Uh, Ross Walters, Roman Gastelum, incredible on the moving cameras this week. Tyler Hooks, our intern, did a little bit of in, uh, race announcing with me this week, wrote all of our interviews because I've had a bum hand the whole time, uh, all of our stories online. Uh, Eric Jensen, our producer, playing the switchboard like a piano the whole time. Brandon Rohde, of course, putting this whole thing together. Richard Lake jumping in here today with me to get this last day underway. I'm Aaron yep. Waldron. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you from the next one. Silver State coming up in April. See you later. This is the ProTech RC LS5. It's a five port long stroke .21 nitro engine, perfect for buggies and great for truck. It features everything you'd expect, like an easy to tune, heat resistant carburetor, turbo plug, large cooling head, and explosive power, all at a price point that blows away the competition. When you need unbelievable torque and gallon after gallon reliability, head on over to A Main Hobbies and pick up the ProTech LS5. Hi, I'm Shane Kelly with Leadfinger RC. We're here at the 2018 Dirt Nitro Challenge, debuting the new LFR A2 tactic body for the Techno NB48.4. Body's been working awesome on this high grip, high speed layout, providing the perfect downforce to get around the track as fast as possible. You can check it out today at leadfingerrc.com. Why do racers from around the world shop at AMA.com Performance Sports and Hobbies? Because winners and world champions shop with the best. We have the hottest new racing kits on the market and the parts and accessories you need to make it to the A-Main. Your competitors already shop with us, shouldn't you? Find out why we're the world's number one source for the gear you need to make it to the podium. Join the race. Log on to AMA.com today. AMA.com. When it comes to true champions by design, Team Associate Ready Controlled Cars have everyone beat, hands down. With multiple national and world titles won over the decades, it's no wonder Team Associated RC vehicles are the highest performing cars and trucks on the track today.